Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're going to have a uh, talk about a modification and about the process involved in that. Uh, what you see here is the aftermath, I guess, of the modification I made to my Benchmade Crooked River. Here are the gray G10 scales that the Crooked River ships with. Here are the orange pivot collars. And guess what? None of these are now on the knife. Instead, we have this the forged carbon fiber scales and forged carbon fiber pivot collar from Rogue Bladeworks. Let you get a chance to sort of just look over the pattern in that carbon fiber. It is really, really nice. Beautiful carbon fiber, by the way. Now it's obviously a lot less noticeable on the pivot collar. You can see just a little bit of a pattern going on in there. Um, just because it's such a small amount, you're not going to get the same effect as you get down here on the scales. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this process, about what was involved. Uh, first off, let me say that I didn't take this whole knife down. I saw no reason to do that considering that I had done it actually just a couple of weeks ago and everything was functioning perfectly. Uh, if you're going to make this transition, then it is a good time to do sort of your, your scheduled maintenance on, uh, on your knife. Um, and by the way, if by chance you're not mechanically inclined and you're really, really uncomfortable taking a knife apart, um, then don't, okay? Uh, the Benchmades, yeah, most knives are pretty easy to take apart. Benchmades are pretty easy to take apart in as well. But there are some people who just, it doesn't matter how easy some kind of mechanical operation is, they're going to struggle with it. And if you're one of those people, then there are things you can do instead. They're not quite as good, but one of the things you can do, for example, is just loosen this screw off, loosen these two screws off, and that's going to give you a little bit of space between the blade and the washers. And then just drop some oil down there. You could drop some cleaning uh, solution down there, forced air through there. All of those are, are alternatives to taking the whole knife apart. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing I want to say about this process is when I was doing this, there were a couple points where um, I actually did start out filming this, but there were a couple of points where you had to really add quite a bit of torque and a bit of force behind what you were doing and reaching around the... Um, the camera stand, why do, why, the tripod, sorry about that, I don't know where that word just went, uh, but reaching around the tripod, it wasn't going to work. So I did have to take this off frame, and after like the fourth, fifth time taking it off frame, I was like, forget it, I'm not going to, I'll just uh, show you guys the aftermath and uh, the finished product. So, <clears throat> a couple of those little qualifications there. The other thing is, uh, this little Weeha set is the one that I have been using and really, really like. I'll put a link to the Amazon, uh, I'll put a link to Amazon for this down in the comment section below, or I mean in the discussion box, but description box down below. I don't know what is going on with me today. My, my brain and my mouth are not well connected here. Um, this is another good option. I'm not sure if this one's on Amazon, but if it is, I'll put a link to it as well. Uh, so... <coughs> The other link I will put down there is Rogue Bladeworks. And let's talk about Rogue, Bl Rogue, Blade, Bl Rogue Bladeworks and the work they've done here and the work they've done on a couple of other knives. They've got a few different models out where they've done scales and they do a really, really nice job. I've heard a number of people, let's move this stuff out of the way so it doesn't distract from the really awesome look of this knife. Uh, so I've, I've seen a number of people and I've read their reviews on Etsy and I've watched a couple of videos uh, of people who've done, had their scales and consistently guys, they do get it right. Okay. And so that is an area where you've got to give those guys a lot of credit. Um, you know, there, there is always, or not always, but there can be some risk when you're dealing with aftermarket stuff of this being messed up and not fitting on your knife properly. And now you've got a huge pain in the neck because you got to send it back and hope for the best. And, and so I've only ever heard really good things about Rogue Blade Works overall quality of what comes out. Now, one of the areas they do seem to struggle is with timeliness. That is getting things out when they say they're going to get them out. Um, and I think what we're dealing with here is just uh, the circumstances that are in existence right now. All right, Rogue Blade Works 
went from, you know, no one was really paying a lot of attention to them, no one really knew about them, to everyone's talking about them. They've done scales for some really popular models, you know, the Benchmade Bugout, uh, the scales they've done for that one, they make the knife look amazing. And that's a great knife already. So you take a really popular Benchmade and you add a really popular option and they're going to be really, really busy. Uh, of course, this is another example. Uh, I've actually talked with Rogue Blade Works about doing scales for uh, the 0393. And they said, yeah, we'll take a look at it. We may be able to do that. So uh, again, popular knife that's going to be really, really popular. Now, here's what happens when you get really popular like that. Who knows what their capacity is for production? But when you get orders that are way beyond your capacity pr for production, you fall behind, right? That happens to anyone. And so I think what we're dealing with right now is that Rogue Blade Works is just there. They've got tons and tons of orders and they don't have tons and tons of capacity to uh, manufacture that stuff. Okay. The other thing that's a, a big, big factor here is they have to take their time. Okay. These things have got to be exactly right. Okay. Uh, you know, the precision on your average high quality folding knife is pretty tight. And so they've really got to get this right. And of course, with, with this particular model, it's going to really stand out. If they don't have these exactly right, this is going to look awful. But as you can see, they've done a great job of getting those really, really tight. Uh, all of the, the hardware fits really, really well. Uh, the pivot collars, I was a little worried about that because to me, that just looks hard. I mean, if you get it off just a little bit, things are not going to work well. And uh, they really do seem to have nailed that. So uh, those factors kind of come together. And, and I think that explains why they're struggling to get stuff out the door as fast as we would like them to. All right. When I bought these, I was told, you know, they'll be ready in about a month. And it ended up taking close sort of four months, three and a half months. Uh, <clears throat> and they, by the way, they know very well that that's not cool. They ended up throwing in uh, the pivot collars and even refunding me a portion of the price. And so, uh, you know, they didn't make any money on this deal and that's too bad. Now, here's the thing I've got to say is, you know, from a business standpoint, they, they're going to have to take some steps and get that under control because who could afford to lose money on every sale, right? It just can't work. So uh, I'm sure that they're getting things dialed in. In fact, I've talked with them a couple of times and they have indicated that they are getting things dialed in. They've also indicated that they're not going to take orders until they're closer to the time where they're able to ship. So I think these are problems that are behind us. You may have seen some of the other videos complaining about that, uh, or you may have seen, you know, discussions. I've seen a couple places where people were talking about it. So uh, I wanted to put that out there and make clear that I'm extremely happy with these. If you've got a Benchmade that they make scales for, I do think you should order from them. I really do. I would encourage you to do that because I sincerely believe that they are doing their very best. You know, I don't think that they're, you know, screwing around and, and uh, not getting things done the way that they should. I think it's just honestly that they're very, very busy and that they have to be very, very careful when making these to get them right. Okay, so all of that stuff behind us. Now we've talked about uh, Rogue Blade Works. Uh, let me talk about the option just a little bit. Uh, I went with forged carbon fiber because I love it. <laughs> uh, I just thought it would be a little more interesting than just standard carbon fiber scales. And it absolutely is. Uh, I am blown away by these scales, guys. They look amazing and they'd make the knife look amazing. I'm super, super stoked. Uh, this is one of my favorite knives already. And now you add this really cool extra detail and it just takes this knife into the stratosphere. Gorgeous, gorgeous knife. By the way, um, the, <clears throat> the scales here are not insanely expensive. All right. You can, you can do the scales and the pivot collar for, you know, just over a hundred bucks. Uh, and that's even with the forged carbon fiber. I think the forged carbon fiber was like five or $10 more than the standard. So not, uh, not at all, you know, extreme in terms of price point. The only thing now missing on this knife is that backspacer. I've got to do something with the backspacer. Hold on. It's not focusing. And so that'll be something that's going to come soon. I've been looking around. I did contact Benchmade and said, like, can you, because they're doing the customizable options now. And so I said, hey, can you um, 
send me out just a, you know, a different backspacer, you know, maybe a blue or a gray. Uh, and they said, nope, can't do that. Uh, if you're watching this, by the way, and you know someone who's doing different backspacers for the Crooked River, uh, let me know. I don't think Rogue Blade Works has any immediate plans to do that. If they did, I would be quite happy to do business with them again. And so if at some point they're doing that, by the way, if someone from Rogue Blade Works, Blade Works is watching, feel free to comment down below. Uh, because if you are doing that, you know, I will definitely be buying a backspacer as well. Uh, overall, guys, I'm super stoked about this knife. I actually like the feel in hand better now than I did before. Um, I, I didn't even realize it. You know, I've used this knife. I've carried it quite a lot. But the G10 is actually a little slick. I mean, it's not so slick that I had any worries about dropping it or anything, which is why I never really thought about it. But there's a little bit of extra texture on here, and it's really, really appreciated. So uh, this is a huge improvement to this knife. Uh, not that it's not a great knife already, but wow is all I can say, guys. Uh, thank you so much to Rogue Blade Works for doing this. Thank you for, for really stepping up when it came to customer service. Um, they did go ahead and, and, as I said, they took care of me really, really well on this order uh, because of the inconvenience. And, and that, I guess that's the other thing that I've got to say, you know, a stand-up company is going to stand behind their work and when they screw up, they're gonna own it. And they really did that as well. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'd love to hear you down below talk about what model you would like to see carbon fiber scales like this for uh, other than the Benchmade Crooked River. And, and they've only really done Benchmades. I'll be interested to see where else they may go with that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.